we're going to do here this evening is, first of all, thank our sponsors. There are four of them. Um, the Sutara Watershed Association is your primary sponsor. League of Women Voters, um, people are here helping us in that regard, uh, doing the timing. We want to try to keep this in a format that moves along, so they're going to be doing that for us. The, uh, <coughs> Our next speaker is uh, it's already on the board here, Mike Lovegreen. Uh, if you saw a little bit of Mike's resume from Bradford County, uh, Mike is, has been since 1980 the, uh, the County Conservation District Director. And my experience with Mike goes back to about 1999-2000 on the Southern Task Force with the Susquehanna River Basin Commission. But my uh, experience with him is that if there's anything in Bradford County that has a potential impact on the soil, farming, or water quality, Mike's there in some capacity. That's his job. He sits on the county advisory committee with three regard to Marcellus because there's a lot of activity in the county. And so I'll turn it over to Mike Lovegreen from Bradford County. Thanks, Tom. Okay, you guys ready? I've got a two-hour presentation that I'm going to give in 15 minutes. <laughs> Go ahead, hit the next one. But I always like to start uh, a talk on perspective, and, and I sincerely believe that you as landowners, decision makers, and officials really need to understand or evaluate the perspective of where you're getting your information, because um, I think as, as Tom mentioned, and, or somebody else mentioned, um, this is a highly charged, it's an emotional issue, Everybody seems to spin information, I, you know, right up to our legislators, depending on, on their political bent and how they how they perceive business and environment and regulation, to our regulators that, that want to present um, information to the community so that they feel secure, that they're being protected, to the industry, to people that are um, not in favor of gas, to the landowner that's getting money back, to the the, the business owner, so you really need, this really is an exercise in critical thinking, and, and you all need, need to exercise that. Go ahead, next one. So it's so a little bit of perspective um, on, on you know, who you're hearing from tonight. Um, I'm a conservation district manager that doesn't know why he's spending so much time on gas, but, but, but is. Um, Bradford County is a rural county, 720,000 acres, about half of it is forest and half of it is farming. We've got about 1,400 farms. Um, in Bradford County, and there's a population of about 62,000. There's been a population of about 62,000 for the last 150 years. That's changing now um, in regards. Why is why is the, the the gas companies? Why are they all kind of focused right now on the northern tier of Pennsylvania? Um, one of the reasons is is that these major transmission lines that carry the gas to the market in the northeast run right through. Um, south, southwestern Pennsylvania and um, the northern part of Pennsylvania. So you can see Bradford County is about where that big circle is, um, and that's the Tennessee gas line. And we also have a big trunk, um, which is the um, Millennium Line in New York. So really close to market. The, uh, the industry is actually saving money by being so close. They don't have to put the infrastructure in. They don't have to um, pay as much to get that that, that gas to market. Go ahead, next. Uh, Bradford County is um, also an area in the Marcella Shale where you have a lot of thick layer of, of shale. It's very productive gas. Uh, the gas changes from where you are in the Marcellus Play. If you go down to the southwestern part of Pennsylvania, um, the gas that's coming out of the Marcellus is very wet. It's mixed with a lot of other gases, and so they have to do refinement and separation before they can put it in the gas line. The gas that's coming out of the northern tier of Pennsylvania um, is, is very mature gas, um, it's very dry gas, and it's very pure gas, so it goes right into the transmission lines without a whole lot of processing on behalf of the gas companies. So that makes it even more valuable. Also, production is a lot higher. When they first started drilling in Bradford County, they were estimating about 2 million cubic feet um, a, a day per well. Um, we're hearing numbers of somewhere between 6 million and 12 million Per, per day uh, coming out of some of these wells. So a lot more gas coming out of that. So, you know, is that going to be the same in, in, in this county? Um, maybe, maybe not. Next slide. Um, you know, a lot of seismic activity went on in the county and continues to go on in the county. These, in fact, somebody hit the lights. Maybe you can see these pictures a whole lot better because you're kind of washed out. There you go. 
Um, these are little seismic um, receivers that are placed. They'll blanket a whole valley with, with, with these receivers and the wires that go with them. Um, miles and miles of wires will get down. They'll drill holes about 20 feet deep uh, all around the countryside and, and set off charges in those holes. That will give them a three-dimensional view of that shale. You know, we picture that shale layer as a nice level, even layer of shale. Well, there's a lot of faults, a lot of upheaval in that shale, so when they put their, their um, horizontal legs, those, those long um, um, laterals out into that shale, they can follow that shale up and down as, as, as far as the drilling, but, but they want to avoid those faults. They want to avoid those areas because that's a non-productive area, and if their drill bit goes to those areas, it's not in the shale. So again, a lot of seismic activity is going on. Go ahead, next. Next. I, I get extra time for that. Okay. <laughs> what, what, do you, what, what can you expect? Um, the typical um, well pad, um, once they sign a well pad, they're going to put that access road and construct that well pad. That's going to be a process of about two, three weeks. Um, each well takes about three weeks to drill. You know, and again, this is kind of on an average. Again, each pad may see as many as, as six wells um, on that pad, but each individual well takes about three weeks to, to drill. Once the drilling's done, they'll usually move that rig off the site, and then depending on the schedule, they might be right behind them with the fracking, or it might be a month or so later. They'll move on to the site, and they'll do that hydrologic or hydraulic frack, fracking. That'll take about a week. During this whole time, you have an awful lot of truck moving, equipment moving in and out. Um, during the, the drilling and, and the fracking process, you have um, people living right on site. You have rig and site crews and personnel all the time. Um, there is a lot of inconvenience for the neighborhood while that's going on because you have a lot of noise and lights. There are other staging areas where they may store pipes and equipment um, and water storage areas that I'll touch on and, and again their impacts to roads. Go ahead, next please. Um, again, typical drilling pad. Um, now with, with uh, you can have multiple wells. Um, we're hearing, you know, six wells. Um, per site, but um, it could be as many as, as eight or more. We're seeing a lot of uh, well pads going in now because of lease issues. They're only putting one or two wells down per pad so that they can lock up those production units and then they'll come back later and put those additional wells in. Um, those, those laterals or those horizontals, um, when they first started drilling in Bradford Canyon were about 2,000 feet long um, and now they're somewhere out there about six, 7,000 feet long. So those original leases um, talked about um, production units of about 640 acres, and the industry is now trying to push those to, to nearly 1,200 acres. And the reason for that is that they can take those laterals out a whole lot further. They can get more gas for, for, for less cost, and, and so they're pushing that. Next, please. Um, you know, this is an example of production units. One of the reasons I threw that up is because people think, well, 640 acres, okay, so we won't see a well pad except for one in every square mile. Well, that's not necessarily true. As you saw in those production units and those lakes of those, um, those wells, they're, they're long, and so um, the average width is about 1,000 feet apart for each one of those lakes. So that implies that when they stimulate or fracture that well, you're going to get about 500 feet on both sides of that that's going to capture that gas that's stimulated. So um, they're going to be very long and narrow, and you may see those well pads as close as a quarter mile or, or less between each of those well pads. Next, please. Next, please. Um, typical well pad, when things got started, um, you'll notice uh, the sites are about five acres. Some of them are, are, are closer to 10 acres when it's on the side of the hill and they got to cut and fill. Um, we've got some really big sites down in the southern part of our county where they're actually carving out sides of mountain to put these well pads on. Um, a lot of the early sites had a number of impoundments on them. You see the big one to the, the top of the uh, top of the screen. That's a fresh water pond, and then the ones to the bottom of the screen, uh, those smaller impoundments, were to, were to capture the, the, the drill cuttings. And those drill cuttings is again during the process. There's a drilling fluid that, that goes down that forces those cuttings back up. Um, they separate some of that liquid out, put the cuttings into a pit. Um, we, we sent a number of delegations down to Texas, and Texas they took those drill cuttings and they spread them out on the landscape. In Pennsylvania they found that there were too many hazardous things coming up with those drill cuttings that, that are part of the geology. And at first what Pennsylvania was doing is, and, and those impoundments are lined with polyethylene, 
they would fold the polyethylene in and then encase them in cement, and they found that they were still leaching and, and, and leaking out into the fields around um, afterwards. So now they're required in Pennsylvania to take those drill cuttings to a to approved landfill um, that can accept hazardous waste material. And, and in fact, a lot of that is going to our, our, our county landfill. But um, and I'll talk a little bit more. Go ahead uh, about those. Um, this is a, a, a site that's finished. I know a lot of people want to know what uh, what do they look like. This is a site in one of our townships. So again, after all the, the, the rigs and everything move off, um, this this is an example of, of one of those um, one of those pads. Next, please. Um, again, a lot of heavy heavy equipment. Um, very heavy equipment, intense. Next, please. Um, you um, driveways is an issue. Access to those drilling pads. Um, as mentioned before, landowners, if they don't have the right to decide where that's going, um, they can put them anywhere, so that is something that should be included um, as far as the negotiations and your lease. But this is something for municipalities too, because this is access to township and state roads. So municipalities should be considering um, those driveway permits or those access so that for as far as safety and clearance um, and that, that type of thing, there should be ordinances in place so that, that they have some control over where these go. Next, please. Um, this is a, a, a graphic from, from uh, Chesapeake. Um, the bigger companies, just as a, a matter of economy, you know, there's an economy of size, um, right now they've done away with, with, with all their um, on-site impoundments. And um, what the companies are doing is they're capturing those, those drill cuttings, they're putting them through uh, a separator which separates the liquids from the solids. The solids go into a steel bin, uh, which is then taken to the landfill. Um, the frac fluid, that, that somewhere between two and eight million gallons that goes down to fracture the, uh, the well, um, when that fluid comes back up, we're hearing estimates of about 30%, uh, plus or minus, depending on which company you're talking to, of that fluid comes back up. Um, the bigger companies now are taking that and, and putting them right into enclosed containers, um, and then those enclosed containers go to different regional filtering stations, and in Bradford County there's probably five or six of them around the county, and they, they put those fluids through a number of filters, and, and those filters remove um, the solids, and then that, that fluid then goes back to the next fracture site, they mix it with fresh water and, and whatever else they mix with it, and, and then send that down to the next hole. Next. Um, there are regulations, go ahead next please, in Pennsylvania, and I'm not going to get into them, but there are a number of different Pennsylvania um, regulations that do um, oversee, um, and, and that's kind of a hit list, next please. And uh, just, uh, um, yeah, I mean, one of the things I get a little impatient with, with, with regulators and legislators and others is, you know, when I hear the comment that, boy, we never expected it to come so quick, or things to happen so quick. This isn't the first time that there's been a gas play. I mean, this has happened in many other states. So, you know, if you don't think it happens quick or didn't think it was going to happen quick, then you've got your head in the sand. These are permits that were issued um, in Bradford County. As you can see, in 2006, there were six of them. 2007, there were 11 of them. Next, please. And, and as you can see, um, this is our planning commission is keeping track of that. The, 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 Permits are up to 1,400 just in 2011. Next, please. Uh, this is a, a, a busy graphic. Our planning commission is trying to chart all the different impacts um, in Bradford County, and this is every everything slide. And you can see this on our county webpage. Um, but it, it's got water impoundments, it's got wells, it's got pipelines, it's got everything. Next, please. Um, this is a picture of all the different companies and where their permits are, are located. And as you can see, they're, they're very consolidated. And what happened is there was a big lease rush, and all the leases were purchased. And when Bradford County got to somewhere around 85% of being a lease, all the companies sat down and they literally traded, le traded leases. And that was so that they could, could consolidate their holdings. So if you sign at one company, it doesn't mean that that's the company that's going to eventually drill on you, unless, again, you have an addendum that says that you have some kind of say in, in who your lease gets passed to. But, but it's a common practice. The reason for is once they start to consolidate, then they can put their infrastructure in. They can start to put their pipelines in that will take the gas from the, from the wells to that distribution line, that Tennessee gas line, and take it to market. 
So you, you know you can see again those different companies. The list over here on the right, yeah, you're right, um, is is all the different companies. There's at least 20, 25 different companies that have at least one well in Bradford County, and, and they do vary considerably in, in their practices and their capabilities from company to company. Next, please. This is um, water impoundments. What um, a lot of the companies. What do you mean? <laughs> I think the clock's broken. <laughs> wow, I'm not even halfway through. These are water impoundments. Water impoundments are, are now regional areas. They sit on top of the hill um, that uh, they can feed. Instead of taking the trucks to the well pads, they're, they're using overland pipes. Next, please. Give me about two seconds per slide now. These are pipelines, uh, pipelines that, that they put in to collect the gas. Um, there's sources of water, which are on the Susquehanna and, and some of our creeks. There's 24 different um, withdrawal sites in, in, in Bradford County right now. Um, there are erosion sedimentation control issues. Go. <laughs> water management plans are required on each site. Um, um, floodplain, hold a second there. Floodplain regulations are a local municipal issue. Um, this is a well site between Bradford and Susquehanna County. And again, that's local municipality. Uh, I can see in the dark. Uh, you got a red light, so the, wrap it up. <laughs> you're going to shut me down. <laughs> this is local municipalities need to, to there's, there's regulations that say the well has to be 200 feet away from the home, but there's no local regulations have to be in place to keep the home from being built close to the well. And I haven't even gotten to landscape impact, so. But he did. Wow, that was a quick 